In this lesson, we're gonna be going through the program that I call the Ultimate Drummer's Hand Speed Workout. I've taken care of every element of this for you, so there's no guesswork, okay? There's gonna be eight different exercises. I'm gonna show you exactly how to play them all. As well, I'm gonna tell you exactly how long to play each one of them, and then we're gonna talk about how long I want you to commit to this program. Be sure and get the PDF workbook downloaded. It is linked below in a pinned comment as well as the video description. It's gonna have a breakdown of all of the exercises. It's gonna have your daily routine. It's gonna have a calendar so that that you can put on there when you practice, how long you practice. It's going to have a checklist for every day so that you can mark off day one, day two, day three. It's going to have a BPM chart so that you can go through and track what BPMs you're at. It is an entire program. It's all taken care of you. It's what I call dummy proof, okay? And I want you to commit to it for 30 days. You're like, Stephen, I can't do 30 days, fine. Do 15 days, okay? But make a time frame and say, I'm committing to this for 15 days. I'm committing to this for 30 days. Commit to it for a time frame. Show up every day. Go through the exercises. Mark your progress. And I promise you, you are going to see an increase in your hand speed. Two very quick points that you have to understand before we get started. Speed is a natural byproduct of learning something well, okay? The better we learn the motions, the quicker they are going to get naturally. You should not have to force the speed. So if you find yourself having some problems with these exercises, the quickest way to get faster is actually to slow it down, learn it correctly, get the spacing correctly, and then try to uh, try to kick your speed back up. I plan exercises so they actually break some things in your playing. So when you're playing through these, you may find that your technique becomes the stumbling block. If that's the case, you may need to pause and go work on your technique. Now I have a whole course on that on my website, my online drum school. You're welcome to go check that out. There's some other great resources out there as well, but just know I, I write these exercises so that they're gonna kind of nitpick at your technique and show you where the flaws are. As far as the most efficient way to increase your speed every day, I recommend that you increase the speed with each exercise only one to two BPMs every day. That's going to ensure that you're seeing progress and your body really has a hard time noticing that small bump up in speed. Avoid large jumps in speed. So avoid 10 BPM, 15 BPM, 20 BPM jumps like we usually do, myself included, in our practice time. One BPM, two BPMs every day or every other day. With each one of these exercises, I want you performing it either two minutes, that's gonna make for the whole routine to last 16 minutes, or four minutes with each exercise, and that will make the whole routine last roughly 30 minutes, about 32 minutes. Let's check out this first exercise. I call it singles train ride. Why do I name these? Because I've been teaching online for like 10 or 11 years and I'm just tired of being like exercise number one. So this one is called singles train ride and it's gonna be working on exactly what it sounds like, your single strokes. Now we are gonna go from eighth notes to triplets to 16th notes to sextuplets to 32nd notes and then back down. That's why I call it the train ride because it kind of feels like you're speeding up and then it kind of feels like that train is slowing down. So we're going to have two measures of single single stroke eighth notes. One and two and three and four and two and two and three and four and. Then we're gonna have two measures of single stroke triplets. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly. Then two measures of single stroke sixteenth notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Then two measures of single stroke sextuplets. That's six notes per beat. One, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six, three, two, three, four, five, six, four, two, three, four, five, six, one and two and three and four and. Then we're going to have four measures of single stroke 32nd notes. Now we're doing four measures because we're doing basically the two measures twice because we do it all the way up and then we're gonna go back down the same way we came up. So now we're gonna have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. 
two measures, two measures, two measures, two, right? Two of each. Then at the top of it, we do two measures and then we repeat that, two measures. Then we go back down. So it's two measures of 32nd notes, two measures of sextuplets, two measures of 16th notes, two measures of triplets, two measures of eighth notes. Let me demonstrate this exercise at around 60 BPM for you. Three and four and. The second exercise I'm entitling Doubles Train Ride. It's exactly the same as the first exercise, but instead of doing single strokes, this time we're doing double strokes. So it's going to be two measures of each, eighth notes, triplets, 16th notes, sextuplets, 32nd notes, and we're going to do them in, uh, in doubles. So it's gonna be one and two and three and four and triplets, one la li, two la li, three la li, four la li, 16th notes, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, sextuplets, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six, three, two, three, four, five, six, four, two, three, four, five, six, and then 32nd notes, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. Don't forget at the top, we repeat those 32nd notes for two more times and then we go back down. Be careful that you're not crushing your diddles. Right? You don't want buzzes, and we also don't want to have that first note louder than the second note. We want our diddles to be even, so we want our double strokes to be even. Let me demonstrate this at 60 BPM. Three and four and. Now obviously the faster you go with that exercise, the more you're gonna rely on rebound. But the slower you go with it when you're just working it out, there's not gonna be as much rebound because there's gonna to need to be more controlled strokes as it's a slower tempo. The third exercise is called table for one, okay? And this is going to really be focusing on your single strokes uh, with each individual hand, okay? So the first measure is four beats of right-handed 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. We do that two times. Then we switch to the left hand. Four beats of single-handed 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. 
Now we're going to go into, now you're gonna do three, four, but it's not that hard of a time signature change. Basically, we're doing three beats of 16th notes single-handed for two times. So one E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a two E and a three E, switch hands. One E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a. Again, each measure, two times. Then we're going to go and we're going to do two beats of 16th notes with each hand. So it's going to be again in four, four, and we're gonna go one E and a two E and a three E and a four. Again, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. You're, you're seeing a pattern here. We're gonna do that measure two times. Then we're going to the next measure. It's going to be one beat of single-handed 16th notes switching to the left hand on the second beat. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. I'll repeat that. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. The next measure is going to be two 16th notes on each hand. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Repeat that again. Two measures there on that measure. Then the last measure is going to be single strokes and it's gonna be 30 second notes. So it's gonna go one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. That's the exercise. Let me demonstrate that at 65 BPM. Three and four and. Exercise number four is, and you're gonna laugh, don't hurt to yourself, because it uses a hurt, come on guys. I mean, if you can't throw some cheese in there with your names, what are we doing here? So the herta is essentially four single stroke notes, two of them played quickly, and the other two played at half the speed. It's a, let, me, let me break that down for you. So we essentially have two 30 second notes followed by two 16th notes. One E and. We're going to repeat that three sixteenth note pattern. So four notes, but three sixteenth notes. One E and. We're gonna repeat that same small pattern four different times for the first three beats of this. So it's gonna go one E and a, two E and a, three E and a. On beat four, we have one more of those, four E and a, and that turns it around so the left hand can lead on the second time. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. It's very important that you notice the space in between these two notes. We have to allow the, the correct space in there. Remember, speed is a natural byproduct of learning something well. Understand it slow, and then the speed will come. Let me play it through for you a couple times at 65 BPM. Three and four and. Exercise number five, I'm calling the diddle turnaround. Now it's similar to that last exercise in the subdivisions and the notes that are there, but the sticking is different, okay? So we're gonna use that same concept, but instead of it being single strokes at the top, we're going to play those as doubles. So it's gonna go one E and, that means the next pattern comes on the left hand. One E and, a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a, uh, and this is how we turn it around. It's gonna go right, right, left, right, right. Four E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Then we start on the left hand. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E, left, left. Let me play that for you at 65 BPM. Three and four and.
Remember, be sure you get the spacing with those doubles correct. Number six is mind the double gap, and it's gonna be dealing with double strokes, okay? Now, one of the things I see whenever it comes to speed is people start speeding things up and they, they forget about the space in between the notes. They're just thinking fast, fast, fast. And so what happens is it becomes sloppy. If you are playing this slowly and you don't have the spacing correctly, when you speed that up, that's going to sound like sloppiness, okay? So when it's slow, it's very, very important that you get the the spacing correct in between these notes. The first measure here, we're gonna repeat twice. And it's very simple. We're gonna go one E and, and then two doubles. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Then we repeat that again. Once we repeat that measure twice, we go to the next measure. The next measure goes one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. 3 E and a, uh, 4 E and a. Uh. We repeat that measure twice. The third measure, you guessed it, really the last measure is, was, is really a six stroke roll. This next measure is going to be a seven stroke roll. So it's gonna go one E and a, uh, you see that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a seven stroke roll. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Repeat that measure twice. The last measure, we're going to have double strokes for three beats in 30 seconds notes and then an accented quarter note. So one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four. What that's gonna allow us to do is then turn that around and play it off of the left hand. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Next measure, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E. And uh, next measure, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. last measure, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Don't forget, if you find yourself struggling with the technique, then stop and go work on your technique, whatever is breaking down. I've got a course for that in my online drum school at stevensdrumshed.com as well. There's other great resources out there, but find one and dig into your technique. Sometimes sideways is the best way forward. It's the fastest way to go forward. Let me demonstrate this at 65 BPM. Three and four and. Remember, I want you to commit to this program for a certain number of days. I would recommend 30 days. Let's just keep consistently build that habit. Two minutes each exercise for a total of 16 minutes per session or four minutes each exercise for a total of 32 minutes for the whole session. So you know exactly how long it's gonna take you. The seventh exercise is gonna be the same exercise except now it's going to be called Mind the Singles Gap because we're gonna be working with single strokes. So the first measure is going to be one E and a. Uh. Then that turns it around to the left hand. Two E and a, uh. three E and a, uh. four E and a. Uh. We repeat that measure again, so two times. The next measure, one E and a, uh. two E and a, uh. three and four exactly the same, repeat that measure. Then measure three, we're going to have one E and a, uh. start on the left, two E and a, uh. right, three E and a, uh. Left, four, E, and A. Uh. Two measures are two times through that measure. The last measure is three beats of 30 second notes, single strokes. One, E, and A, uh, two, E, and A, uh, three, E, and A, uh, four. And then, just as you guessed it, we go back through it with the left hand lead. Let me demonstrate that at 65 BPM. Three, and four, and.
Exercise number eight, I'm calling that rebound life. And it's gonna be focusing on rebound, specifically rebound that you get from a molar type of a stroke where you're utilizing rebound and you're getting multiple strokes uh, or you're getting multiple notes for just one stroke. Again, you need to know more about that. I have more information on my website. You can go check that out or find another resource. Um, but this does utilize rebound. Essentially, if you're at a slower tempo, obviously there's going to be more control than if you're at a faster tempo. But once we start pushing the tempo envelope with this, you should be relying almost solely on rebound. It's a very simple exercise. All 16th notes for the first two measures. The first measure goes one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Accenting every time you hit that uh, different hand. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Then left hand. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Then the last measure is going to be 30 second notes and it's going to go one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So you're putting those together and interlacing them. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Speed that up. One E and a, two E. And all of that is rebound. Let me demonstrate this at 70 BPM. Three and four and. Don't forget to download the PDF workbook. It is linked below. It has all the resources you need. And then let me know in the comments how it's going.